All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Polkit K. Agarwal. I am the founder and CEO of Beer 30 by the Fifth Ingredient. And today we're going to have a really cool craft beer professionals webinar, really focused in on the benefits of using real time data to manage production. And joining me today, we have Kristen McGarry from Your Mates Brewing Co. and Eric Adam from Penco Brewing. And we've the three of us have been working together for a while now, um, Beer 30 at Penco, Beer 30 at Euromates. And it's just really cool to just have some conversations with current customers about their own growth, their own leadership journey, and really getting into just how they use data to get into the flow of things and get into really having some awesome planning into 2024. So with that, let's just start off with some introductions. Uh, Kristen, how about on your end? Like, your background, kind of what's your role at your mates, a little bit about the story of your mates as well would be awesome for everybody to listen in on. Cool. Um, g'day, guys. Um, yep, yeah, like Pukut said, is uh, my name is Kristen McGarry, or your mate McGarry, um, one, of the, uh, one of the founders of Your Mates Brewing Co., founding brewer. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just celebrating 10 years of um, running Your Mates. Um, and yeah, it's gone from the, the garage um, in the little beach shack on the Sunshine Coast um, to now kind of being uh, pretty heavily distributed um, nationwide in Australia, actually. Um, so, yeah, we're doing uh, just under a, a million litres last year. Um, and, um, yeah, the growth trajectory has been pretty pretty steep. Um, we onboarded uh, Beer 30. Uh, when would, that would have been probably almost five years ago now. Um, yeah. 2019 it would have been when we were um it's actually five days five years ago today that we opened uh, the facility that we're in uh right nice. now that's awesome congrats on that five yeah, yeah. Facility. that's really cool yeah yeah uh, pretty special um and um yeah we were pulling our hair out with uh spreadsheets and all the like um as uh, as you do in the early days and um one of the things that definitely uh appealed to me was uh we've been trying to onboard things like unleashed and other accounting um software suites and it just wasn't built for built for a brewer and built for a brewery mindset um and the onboarding by the time we'd get close to being able to roll something out we just the data would just be old um and so that was one of the things that really appealed to me when we first onboarded um beer 30 and was promised that it would be a very uh, quick onboarding process within a within a day i think uh paul get promised and it was actually um true and um yeah we've we've been kind of growing on a similar trajectory as beer 30 for these these last almost five years um we've uh we've hit some milestones in that time uh we went on the shark tank here in australia um, pitch the business there, which was pretty exciting. Um, we we have. Wait, a, let's pause on that. Pa pause on that, Christian. I think you got to just give like a thirty-second experience of what it was like being on Shark Tank Australia. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty pretty nerve-wracking. Um, so um, the the kind of the the outcome of it was when we went on TV, we didn't look like dickheads. So that was the that was the the best thing came from it um we didn't get a deal with the sharks um which um in hindsight i think was the best thing for us uh we ended up um we ended up finding the investment we were chasing after the shark tank but yeah our um so we as part of our brewery we call each of our core range beers a name um to kind of personify the flavors and make them relatable um and uh and our and our flagship beer uh larry the pale ale we looked bloody good on national tv so um yeah that was a that was a win but walking out in front of the sharks um you know we had to wait there for them to adjust the cameras and we'd already we'd already been filmed walking up to the doors like 10 times and then they go okay <laughs> this you go out stand on the spot um the shark's gonna be there it's probably gonna be about five to ten minutes before we actually you actually start the pitch um so look at the sharks look away from the sharks smile don't smile it's up to you guys so me and my business partner matt obviously said yeah we got to go out and staunch them you know got to like make sure they're intimidated by us before we do this pitch um although i don't know if we were that intimidating 
Nice. Dude, that's that's crazy. That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah, definitely once in a once in a brewery lifetime experience, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Eric, how about on your case? Can you tell us more about Penco Brewing, your role there, and kind of the story there as well? Uh, sure. No sharks in my in my past, um, but uh, we started out uh, in 2016, um, initially just as a tap room. Uh, a couple of brothers who lived in a very small town where we started out um, decided they wanted to open the tap room, and uh, the plan was always to open up a brewery after that. Um, so they started brewing beer in 2019 on a one barrel system that was basically a glorified homebrew setup. Um, I came out in 2020, right around the time we opened a 10 barrel brew house there. Um, my background has been in, I've been brewing off and on for 15, 16 years or something like that. Um, I've also got a lot of background in software development, data analytics, um, QA, that sort of thing. So um, when I walked in kind of initially at the setup of this, this whole company and operation, uh it was pretty clear to me and to our owner that we needed some levels of organization because your comment about you know everything on loose spreadsheets was too true that hit too close to home so uh we we went down the road of trying to find a good solution to manage all of the various data that we were doing i mean i'm sure a lot of people listening are uh experience with what it's like to be running a small brewery and everybody's got to do a million different jobs and there's never enough staff um, and something's always broken and there's always problems to deal with. So uh, not having to worry about the data piece of it was really important to us. Um, we did the spreadsheet thing for a while. Uh, I was sinking a ton of time into just maintaining all of our data and keeping our records straight. And that was time that I wasn't spending making beer. Um, so then uh, we tried a uh, competitor of Beer 30s first, um, had them for about six months. It was kind of a catastrophe. Uh, it really didn't go very well at all. It actually increased the amount of time we were spending on admin work, um, left me and the other brewery staff just sitting in front of a computer for like way more time than we needed to be. Um, we eventually pulled the plug on and said, well, we're back to spreadsheets. And uh, it was, I think, a year ago, almost exactly, um, that we came online with Beer 30. I got the timing on the, right on that? Yeah, we're on there, yep. Yeah, um, and it's been awesome. Uh, we had, you know, same deal. We were promised onboarding in like a day or two. It was about what we got. Um, there have been very few challenges along the way. Everything's just kind of worked. Um, and uh, thus far, I've been really happy with it. So that's kind of our, our story with Beer 30. Um, as a company, we're focused on um, being very community centric. Our motto is craft community collaboration. Um, so we uh, kind of coming from the community that we started out in, We've since undergone quite a lot of growth, um, expanded out into uh, the place where we started. Coopville is on uh, Whidbey Island, which is a fairly large island, but an island in the Puget Sound uh, off the coast of Washington State. Um, over about three years, we grew from non-existence to being the biggest brewery um, on that island and in that county. Um, and then about six months ago, um, we expanded off uh, onto the mainland. So we're like, you know, real Washingtonians today uh, and open up a brewery here in Lake Stevens, which you guys see behind me at the moment. Um, and that's, uh, that's kind of what's gotten us to this point. And we've, uh, we've had a pretty steep growth curve similarly um, and are trying to continue growing fast. So uh, having Beer 30 around is, is really helping out with that. Very cool. Yeah, and I think one of the coolest things about this call right now, you have Kristen, who's in Australia. I'm back home in Miami, Florida. And you have Eric, who's in Washington State in the US. So it's really cool on our perspective as well, just to keep building out our customers around the world. Uh, we're up to 19 countries last I checked. So it's uh, really cool to just see that aspect of global time zones, customers around the world, support team on our end around the world. So yeah, it's really fun to just get you know, Kristen, you coming on at 7.30 a.m. your time uh, just to get this conversation going. So, you know, as we kind of look into this, and I think anybody just who's watching this, who regardless of whether they have your 30 or spreadsheets or a competitor of ours, what would be some of the big messages that you two have when it comes to the way that you both use data, right? Because at the end of the day, data is how you make decisions. And we'd love to hear just in general, uh, I guess, Kristen, let's start with you. 
how has data really impacted the way that you run your operations, right? Because you've scaled from, you said now you're at 1 million liters. That's for everybody watching globally. That's about 8,500 barrels, 9,000 barrels roughly in that ballpark. So um, yeah, how have you used data to really scale up your operations from your growth trajectory? Um, oh, in, in every single way. Um, and it's, um, it, we couldn't do it without having all of the access to the data that we've got. Um, um, in particular, recently, I think um, it's, it's the MRP uh, module that really has revolutionized um, uh, procurement here at, at your mates. And um, being able to kind of put the schedule in and see when we're going to run out of ingredients before we run out of them, you know, when you've got... Um, yeah, and sorry to be talking in um, liters, uh, but when you got twenty thousand liters of beer in a tank, and you've got another, uh, like in in the bright tank, and you've got another twenty thousand ready to come through the centrifuge the next day, um, and for some reason someone forgot to order, um, you know, four cent um, four pack barcodes, uh, we can't package, and everything gets banked up, and all the schedule just gets pushed back because of something really simple that it's not a financial burden to, this, to, the, to the company. It's just that someone might not, not have realized, oh, hey, we're running a little bit low on it. And that MRP just makes it foolproof. You, know, you can see if you've got your schedule in, in the system right, then you know when you're going to run out of every single different material. Um, and, and like that's a full-time job. That's what I've, I've said in the um, previous discussions with, with Beer 30 is that if, if you did, if you were trying to do that without a system like the 30, it would take someone full time to be tracking everything, making sure that the inventory was always accurate and live, trying to pull things out of that. Um, it would just be an absolute nightmare. So that that's really one of the ways that uh, it's helped us. Um, probably another thing worth mentioning, and and it's pretty exciting. Um, uh, milestone at our brewery here is we just um, passed our HACCP um, food safety um, certification. Um, the guys were just really blown away by um, how Beer 30 is, is helping us with traceability, uh, with all of our CIP um, uh, checks and, and, and having that recorded and, and, and really like that Beer 30 has been huge. It, may, it really made that whole process so simple and seamless. Uh, someone to come in and say, okay, well, show us um, how you, you're tracing all the batch code. Show us how you're uh, verifying your CIPs. Show us how you're uh, um, receiving stock and identifying non-conformance. And, um, and it's all in there. Um, that's the, most, the best part of it is that we don't have to have it five other spreadsheets running all of that stuff. Um, and yeah, I can't um, express how important it is for a brewery of our size um, to have that hazard certification. So yeah, really exciting um, milestone for us. And um, yeah, without Bill 30, it would have been a lot, a lot more difficult. Nice, congrats on that hazard. That's actually news to me as well. So that is really epic. And I know just in general, getting HACCP accredited critical control points and hazardous hazardous and critical control points that's huge for a brewery so props to you all that's, that's really cool um yes. eric how about on your end tell us more about like just growth and how you end up using data on a day-to-day -to, -day to make your decisions and time savings and admin and how do you actually work through data yeah um i mean data is kind of at the heart of everything that we do here um i'm a super data-driven brewer uh I've, I've worked with a lot of people who are just like yeah you know well I got a sense for it. I can go by my gut. And that is, I am the opposite of that. I'm every time I brew anything, I'm looking at our batch notes from the last time that we brewed. I'm comparing and contrasting how fermentation profiles went. I'm looking at schedules moving forward. And Beer 30 has all of that in one spot, which is really useful. And not just in one spot, but at my fingertips. Like, kind of gone for me are the days when I would have to like run upstairs, sit down at the computer in the office, and like look a bunch of stuff up and run back down to what I'm doing. My phone is an integrated part of my process now. I keep Build Gear 30 on a tab open all the time and I've got everything I need when I need it. And I can just kind of like move through my day in real time, relying on all the data that we've accumulated as we go. 
Um, so that's huge. Like just just being able to have it right there when you need it is great. Um, it's, it also makes quantifying time savings a little bit tricky because I almost never sit in front of a computer and just do do data logging stuff anymore. It just it just sort of happens integrated into my flow. If I had to guess, I'm I'm thinking we're I'm saving about 20 man hours a week, maybe a little bit more. That might be a little bit on the low end actually. Um, wow, nice. Yeah. Uh, it just really does uh, make a huge difference for us. Uh, I, I know uh, Kristen mentioned the um, the MRP. That's that's another one of those like big time saving features where just the simple act of sitting down, you know, once a week and figuring out, all right, well, what are we starting to run low on? What do we got coming up? Doing sort of forecasting, and I got to pull this recipe and take a look at all the different ingredients that uses and contrasting with what we've got. No, nope, someone didn't do the inventory right before because I got to compare pieces of paper and. It was just a mess. It just took forever. It was spending, you know, almost a full day every week just staying on top of our inventory and um, the MRP system. I just, you know, click a button and it's right there in front of me. Um, I can, hey, here's all the hops that you need to order this week. Here's all the grain that you need to order this week. And in a matter of an hour or so, I can knock out our uh, our inventory management, which is huge, just just super helpful. Um, so yeah, that's been a really big for us, a big win for us. Um, those are the two big ones that jumped to mind. I mean, there's lots of little things here and there. The scheduling module has been great. Um, I, I think I mentioned I come from a software development background. Uh, I've, I've got a lot of experience with data. I'm pretty darn good with Excel. Uh, so prior to having Beer 30, I had made a really complicated Excel spreadsheet to manage all of our uh, all of our scheduling. I was pretty proud of it. Uh, it, it. It did all the things that you would you wouldn't think Excel could do. Um, but it still took a ton of maintenance. Uh, and with the schedule module, I can just you know go and put this here, drag it around. Oh, that that can't happen this way. Now we can make a quick little change, and everything just sort of reacts and adjusts accordingly. Um, and that's that's huge. Uh, it's it's better than I could do on my own, which is something that's really cool. So, right. yeah, that's all helped quite a lot. Yeah, I think Kristen, you have a similar spreadsheet because I remember a screen share like years ago <laughs> where you started showing me your ordering spreadsheet and things. How's How's that transition been? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. The less spreadsheets we um, utilize, the better. Um, although, um, I, yeah, I wasn't a spreadsheet person before um, I started a brewery. And um, they, they are they are things of beauty, really, when they're, when they're constructed well. But usually it's only the one person who made the spreadsheet who can actually operate it properly. And if anything goes wrong if someone accidentally presses the wrong button in the wrong cell you know that that it's all over um so that's why you know having something like p30 to to take that um to take that um room out of the equation is is, is a you can't put it you can't put a price on that probably one other um you know real time uh, story or a, a real real scenario that that to talk to to talk to about the benefits of that lot traceability is, um, you know, something that no brewery ever wants to have to go through. Um, we went through um, at the start of this year um, was a product recall. Um, in fact, we're actually the brewery name. The brewery was not mentioned. The, the brewery name was not mentioned, but um, the beer was mentioned on both Jimmy Kimmel and um, Jimmy Fallon. Um, Oh, okay. uh, that, yeah, we, we had a, a watermelon sour that um, that refermented, and we had to um, we had to um, do a product recall. On that. Luckily, it was you know it was all blown out of proportion in terms of it getting on American late night TV. It was literally fifty cases of it that we packaged. Um, but you know, product recalls people love to jump on those and tighten them up in the news um, but it was a good practice run for us to to see if our product recall um, program actually did work um, and like straight into beer 30 type in the the batch code and we could see exactly where all of those um, cartons had gone to made it so much easier for our um, compliance reporting to like our food uh, food safety body here in the here in Australia and also just in the actual locating of of all those um, cartons and, and finding out whether we could get them back and uh, yeah helping us with that with that program you know we pay a lot of money for product recall insurance and um it's something that definitely keeps me up at night is 
um, well, used to keep me up at night, doesn't anymore, um, is, yeah, is yeah, having, yeah. having 20,000 litres uh, worth of cartons out in national distributors um, and having to do a product recall through them um, because, yeah, they charge to recall the beer, to pick the beer out of store, um, to replace the beer. It would, it would, it's almost a business ending event or something like that. Um, you know, you really need to have some, some pretty good working capital reserves to, to survive something like that, which is why we pay the insurance and um, why we've now got that HACCP certification. And yeah, that, that lot traceability is, is magic. Beautiful. Yeah, that's awesome. And I'm going to definitely find that clip afterwards online of Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel and see where they where they mentioned the watermelon sour. That's actually a sorry, fun story. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Jimmy. It was Jimmy Fallon, definitely. And then Stephen Colbert. Colbert? Okay. Yeah. Not 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 Jimmy Kimmel. Sorry. I got cool. Jimmy up. Fallon and Stephen Colbert. All right. That's for everybody watching. That'll be a fun one to YouTube right after this and, and try and find it. <laughs> so, that's a good one. Uh, kind of transitioning, just in general, looking at 2024, because we are at the end of the calendar here. Here, what are some of the most exciting things that you both have uh, happening at the brewery as a whole? I know Christian Gabs is coming up, and so for both of our Australian and our US uh, people and international people, we'd love to hear a bit more about your Gabs experience and kind of what that looks like for 2024 as well. Yeah, Gabs is always a big one on the calendar for us. It's a, basically a big popularity contest for uh, for craft beer here in Australia. Um, and it really was one of the things that put um, us, like Sunshine Coast is a pretty um, small coastal town in Queensland. Um, wasn't always, well, it, it's referred to now as the craft beer capital of Australia. Uh, we've got like... Okay. 22 breweries and a population of about 200,000 people. Um, so it's, it's it's actually the most breweries per capita in Australia. Uh, we were one of the first, you know, four to open here um, 10 years ago, and and really it was it was something that we didn't take seriously. We made a little video to kind of see if our community would um, get behind us, and um, we ended up uh, cracking the top 10 most popular beers in Australia. And these like, you know, these are guys who are doing like 10 to 20 times the volume that we're doing. Um, and it kind of really made everyone kind of sit up and say, oh, who the heck are these your mates guys? What the, what the hell's a Larry? Um, uh, especially those guys down in Melbourne and Sydney who like, we, we still don't really distribute down there like properly. Um, we, we are still focused on our backyard here in Queensland. So um, that's, that's an exciting one. Um, so Larry's been voted in the top five most popular beers in the last four years now. So yeah, we're super proud, uh, punching above our weight for a, a still still a relatively small um, brewery here in Australia. Um, but apart from that, yeah, just um, just keep streamlining. We we set up our uh, new uh, site, which we, we took over the shed next door to our original site. Um, would have been, yeah, almost close to 18 months ago. Uh, and yeah, just keep, we've got a bit of headroom now. So continue to grow into that headroom um, and focusing on upskilling our team and, and, and taking them on that development journey. Um, keep having a good time, celebrating the wins. Uh, that's that's what next year looks like for us. Legend, that's awesome. Uh, Eric, how about on your end, just to wrap up here, what does 2024 look like? What are you most excited about going into it? <laughs> Um, I'm excited about not growing for once. We, <laughs> we've, we've been uh, opening a new location every year for the last three years. Uh, and we, we finally, in the spot that we just opened here in Lake Stevens, um, I feel like we've really grown up a lot. Um, got a nice, beautiful new production facility attached to a big two level tap room with 32 taps and a full kitchen and a liquor bar upstairs. And it's, it's a, way bigger than anything that I thought I was walking into a few years back. Um, so we're really looking to uh, to reach out to the community here in our new location. Um, community is always at the core of what we do. So we're trying to, you know, build those bonds of trust here. Um, we uh, <laughs> share a quick anecdote. I thankfully did not have uh, any foibles end up on late night TV. Um, <laughs> sympathies I'm in, that sucks. Uh, but we did, uh, we had a really rough 
summer here on account of um, we had been with a distributor um, and uh, we found out via post on a, on a Washington State beer blog that our distributor was out of business and we lost our entire distribution channel overnight. Um, Whoa. So that was a quick thing to have to react to. Your entire uh, distribution channel overnight? Yeah, yeah. Uh, most of it. We had self-distribution to our own county, but uh, we were distributed all throughout the state, um, and it vanished without even so much as a phone call. Uh, and then that got followed up with a... Um, so as I mentioned, we're very like community-centric. Uh, part of that included using locally grown ingredients. We had contracts with a bunch of farmers on with the island where we're from to grow all our grain for us, and we got it malted at a uh, local craft maltster um, who also went out of business without any warning, and we found out via blog post. Uh, so I had to recalibrate all of our recipes, um, kind of at the drop of the hat in the middle of our busiest season, um, while st still trying to figure out what to do about the, the lost third or so of our revenue that comes from distribution. So it was a really chaotic summer. Um, and a lot of that I was doing completely solo because we had some staffing challenges and opening a new location and all that. Um, Beer 30 made all that possible. <laughs> like there is absolutely no way I could have survived this past summer without at least having the basis of like all my MRP stuff figured out, the ability to um, have all of my recipes coordinated in one spot, all of our inventory, you know, easily secured so I can react to those challenges in real time. Um, those extra man hours that we saved from having it really, uh, really helped stabilize things when we needed it most. Um, and uh, yeah, as for 2024, I'm I'm looking forward to boring. That would be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> nice, looking forward to boring. That's a that's a good quote to <laughs> wrap that piece up for sure. So cool. That was pretty much kind of what I had on my list here. Um, anything else anybody wants to ask or questions from anybody watching live as well? Feel free to type them into the comment section on YouTube. We'll see those, um, and you know we can go from there. Anything, Eric, Kristen, you want to add in or questions for me? Anything else? What do you guys got coming up in 2024 that we should be excited about? <laughs> Great question. Yeah, nice. <laughs> right. yeah. So, yeah, that's awesome. So for 2024, uh, there's some really cool um, just operational changes that we're focused in on. Um, so one of the big ones rolling out in early January, uh, in early February, is going to be our finished goods traceability module. So Kristen, this is the one you've been asking about for years which is in our cold box actually adding batch codes to the finished products and actually knowing exactly what is the batch number that's sitting in your cold box or other cool rooms or third-party locations and it's pretty much a pretty big restructure on our back end to get to this position and um it ties in so nicely with that whole traceability piece of knowing just what is in your cold box but adding in some really cool insights like what's my age inventory look like right what do I want my salespeople to actually sell because this product is going out of code in the next 90 days, right? Okay, so cool. just really cool aspects like that. Admittedly, we that's we do have a spreadsheet that we're looking after that that part <laughs> of it at the moment. So the guys doing stock tag will be absolutely frothing on that. Yeah, man, that's gonna be that's gonna be in early Feb, uh, early to mid Feb. So that's a really exciting one for sure. Um, and then, yeah, looking at some of the other um, pieces on our roadmap, you know, we are still looking at just ways that we can help with the brewery owner itself, right? Like right now, one of the big aspects that we know is there's just so much awesome data in Beer 30. You can pull up COGS for Larry, for example, and you can go ahead and pick up your IPA cost of goods sold and know what's going on. But we want to understand that data more, right? Like what kind of trends can we actually show you all when it comes to that data, right? Like maybe, Christian, you want to dive in and say like, hey, over the last five years worth of data in beer 30 for Larry, how has that cost of goods changed, right? Like, what does that actually look like? What is that fluctuation? And so that's like the level of awesomeness that we want to get to with this data set in 2024. It's just not just showing you the data, but providing you with some really cool insights as to what's going to happen. So um, that's going to be awesome. Um, and that's going to be a really fun one to just dive in on and just build more product updates along with that. Um, and then as a whole, just 2024, multiple conferences coming up. Uh, Christian, we're definitely coming down for BrewCon in Australia. So that's going to be awesome. We'll have Brew Asia in Singapore as well. Eric will be at CBC in case you'll be there in Las Vegas this year. And then 
the state guild events throughout as well throughout the year. So the sales team, marketing team, super stoked on that side. Product engineering, super stoked with some of these new updates and just the workflows and customer experience, just loving the new updates that make customers happy and then really working through by Q&A and just diving in with more customer, you know, customer conversations like this to understand what it is that you want, right? And so definitely Chris and Eric, you know, the product team will be reaching out and saying, hey, Kristen, what do you think about stock take? You've been talking about this for years. Does this finally solve your finished goods traceability problem? Or Eric, whatever other cool ideas that you may have, they all tie in just along that to just be able to dive in and say, hey, what's going on in this uh, particular part of the process? Cool, that's very exciting. Yeah. Um, so yeah. In particular, like the, the finished goods one, yeah, that's a huge tick from 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 us um but yeah as a as a business owner as well being able to you know get some simple like output data of you know we we try and we try and keep all our reports to you know one page where you you, you don't have to spend so much time trying to work out exactly what you're looking at to 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 see what positive change has has been happening or, or or the other way to to flag those uh, instances where we're where we're, we're not tr we're not going in the direction that we're uh, we were hoping yeah and and to be able to share that information with the team tell them that they're doing a good job and show them that they're doing a good job um, yeah it's crucial yeah that's that's awesome Christina that's our theme for 2024 is what can we do to tie in with the reports and the insights for the owners so um, yeah let, let's see how this plays out and as always. For the two of you and anybody else watching, if you're a current customer, ping us a note on WhatsApp, right? Like, hey, these are the current, like, biggest pain points and reports that we want to see. Or once these go live, getting feedback for what is actually there. So it becomes a really cool way. And if you're watching and are interested, just, again, reach out to fifthingredient.com, shoot us a note, comment below, whatever else you want. And we'll be able to then connect with you and see how we can actually look at the data to help manage production uh, from there as well. Cool. Kristen, Eric, anything else you two want to add? Great question, Eric. <laughs> I set you up for that one. <laughs> no, that's all I got, guys. Uh, thanks for the time. And happy New Year out there, everybody. Yeah, for sure. Thank you both. Appreciate your time. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Have a happy holidays and looking forward to an epic 2024. Cool. Cheers, guys. Merry Christmas. Yep, bye.